Hi everyone, I'm Kim Anderson. We are targeting the violence here at NBC 15. This is our Facebook Live slash podcast where we are finding ways to help the youth in our community here along the Gulf Coast to uh, target their energy that they have, not to violence, but to good productive um, outlets and become, become productive citizens in our community. And that's what we're going to do. And my guest is Robert Kennedy. As you just got a glimpse of him, he is CEO of the Boys and Girls Club here at South Alabama. And, you know, I gave a, a quick snippet preview a little bit earlier mm -hmm. on Facebook. And I was saying a lot of people, when you hear Boys and Girls Club, you're thinking after school activities mm -hmm. or summer camps. But there's a lot more that the Boys and Girls Club does to assist even the school system. Yes throughout the school year. Yes, so our full name is actually the Boys and Girls Clubs of South Alabama and affiliated organizations. Oh. And one of our affiliated organizations is Point Academy. Mm -hmm. And Point Academy is the school that focuses on uh, primarily two demographics. The first are nonviolent adjudicated youth. So someone who has had an interaction with the criminal justice system and is either incarcerated at Strickland Youth Center or on probation and attending the main campus of Point Academy. And in addition to that, we also serve the population of students who have been expelled from public school due to some sort of conduct infraction. So this gives these kids the opportunity to still continue their education because a lot of people think once you're out of the public school system, that's it. Well, one of the things we all know about public school in general is that is the obligation that we as a society have to make sure that our children are educated. And so even though they may, for one reason or another, not be able to do that in the traditional academic setting, we still have that obligation to them. So we, as Boys and Girls Clubs of South Alabama, are contracted through the Mobile County Public School System to continue to provide children with that education. Well, Robert, it's, it's deeper than education. Mm -hmm. And let's face it here, we know that because some kids uh, may fight the education system. Sure. Um, but when they get out and they find themselves incarcerated or in a different system, that education may actually save their life. Absolutely. You know, one of the things we were talking about earlier today, we were meeting and the, and the team was prepping me for the conversation I would be having with you today, is that although it may not appear so at first glance, we actually have successes that can be celebrated. So we were talking today, as a matter of fact, about nine of our children who have graduated already this year. And most of those children are actually going to receive a high school diploma from the Mobile County Public School System. And then we have one, two, or three that will actually end up getting a GED. But just think about the fact that they've gotten that piece of paper now. Mm -hmm. And so now they're positioned to go on to whatever their follow-on activity is going to be. And that's something to be proud of. Mm -hmm. And uh, it doesn't matter what your background is or how long it's taking you to get there. Just to say, you know what, I was able to accomplish this and finish and get an education. They were talking about one student in particular who was a student who was incarcerated at Strickland Youth Center who actually when he gave his testimonial to the judge at the time that he was being released said that if I had not been here I don't think that I would have actually completed my coursework and graduated. So we think about a lot of times holding children accountable for in this case criminal behavior but to a certain extent by doing it early and putting them on the right path we've potentially mitigated the risk that they would end up doing something as an adult uh, and not having the opportunity from that point forward. Let's talk about the difference that the Boys and Girls Club or something like Point Academy can make in someone's life because mm -hmm. you see all types of children come through the doors of we the do. Boys and Girls Club. We do. Um, you see at-risk kids, you see affluent kids, so you know that the difference it can make. Mm -hmm. You know, it's funny, I went to United States Naval Academy for undergrad and I had my 30-year class reunion relatively recently. Congratulations. And uh, thank you so much. And we were sitting there and we were talking about boys and girls clubs. And among my college peer group, it was a perception that it was only at-risk kids. And some people thought that we were only a day daycare program. Well, that is not the case at all. Mm -hmm. uh, we actually deal with kids all up and down the entire economic spectrum. Some of our kids are what we would consider Title I who are eligible for free and reduced lunch. And then other kids are coming from communities that are more affluent. Um, the thing about the Boys and Girls Club program and the reason why it ends up working for us is that we have a physical place that is safe. We have a program that is engaging and that program is administered by trusted adults. So any hour on any day that a child is spending time with us, they're not out in the streets involved in some sort of foolishness that could ultimately get them in trouble.
And I've attended one of the banquets before mm -hmm. um, where the kids are involved and there's all types of different award things that these kids uh, can achieve and mm -hmm. then they reach out for. Yes. Tell us about some of those different programs, I mean, that has helped set them on the path to college and even scholarships. Well, the one that I'll talk about right now that's most top of mind is actually our Youth of the Year. So we actually go through a Youth of the Year cycle. It starts locally at the club level and then it progresses through the state all the way up to the national level. So our Youth of the Year banquet will be on May the 25th, right here in Mobile, Alabama. Uh, we will be celebrating all of the Youth of the Year from those various clubs around the city. And if anybody would love to participate or even contribute and sponsor a table, we can definitely get you the information that allows you to do so. But that's yeah. important because anything that we get from the community, whether from the public sector and our public officials have been very generous in terms of supporting us, or through the individual giving or corporate philanthropy efforts, those are more children that we're actually able to put into programs like that and ultimately set them up for future success. And you mentioned something about sponsors. Let's talk about how mm -hmm. important that is too, because I mean, we're talking about trying to find ways to target the violence and yes. help these kids because a lot of people growing up saying, hey, you know, it opened the community centers back up. Mm -hmm. You know, when I was growing up, they had uh, community centers on every corner that mm -hmm. gave kids outlets so they're not out in the streets um, like the Boys and Girls Club try to do, but it, it costs money it, it, to well, try to keep these centers open. It, it does cost money, and if we talk about this from a targeting the violence standpoint and start initially with the population of kids that we serve at Point Academy, uh, it's actually very interesting because for us, it's only just a modest amount of incremental resources and we could literally change the lives of these children. I'll give you an example of what it is that I'm talking about. Okay. So right now on the Point Academy side, we operate on about a $2 million a year budget. Mm. We have about 40 staff members and those are mostly teachers. So if we could increase that staff or increase the budget from about $2 million a year to $2.5 million a year, the first thing that allows us to do is, you know, the pay raise that was given to the teachers throughout the state of Alabama last year, and it was signed by the governor, that doesn't flow to us naturally. So we are considered a specialized treatment facility, so we don't get that automatically the way that all the teachers throughout the states do. Okay. So the first thing it would do would be allow us to bring our staff members on parity with the other teachers throughout the system. The second thing that it would allow us to do is it would allow us to staff within Point Academy after school programs. So right now, we only exist during the academic school day. We don't have the athletic programs, we don't have the art programs that we could if we had the staff to support those programs. And then perhaps the most important thing is it would allow us to run additional transportation. So if kids are participating in those after school programs, then when the after school program is over, we'd actually be able to transport them home much the same way that we do with the kids at the end of the academic day. Those are really the three things that would allow us literally to change the, ki the lives of those kids who are in that target population because they've either been placed on probation or they've been kicked out of school for something related to conduct. That's really concrete actions that we can take to actually improve. And something so small, how important is something like you mentioned, you know, athletics, sports, mm -hmm. art, how important is something like that for these kids? I know that we push academics so much, but we don't, we don't push the other outlets that these kids need. We know from all the academic research that your grades in high school are a good predictor of what your grades would be in college. But when you look at leadership skills, your ability to socialize, and perhaps most importantly, when you're operating in extracurricular and sports programs, you're learning how to deal with conflict resolution whenever there are problems. If we can give some of those intangible skills to these young people, that will prevent them from getting into those violent situations when they are facing conflict. And so that, to a certain extent, is as important, if not more important, than the grades that a kid's getting in class. So when a lot of people are saying, hey, take away these things from the kids and put more into academics, that's not what we really need to do. In the case of the Point Academy kids, we need to figure out how to give them their enrichment activities, um, that allow them to interact with each other outside of the academic environment because ultimately when they leave our four walls, that's what they're doing. They're interacting with people outside of the academic environment. And I'll actually give you one more. Okay. The one other thing that we could do to change the lives of these Point Academy kids is if we provided them with the opportunity to get summer jobs. So they're going during the regular school year just like the other kids, 
but during the summer, there's that drop off. So they're not under our supervision the way they would be in during the academic year. Uh, if we could get some funding that would actually be budget for employers to provide summer jobs to these young people, then we're getting them training, we're getting them soft skills, we're giving them the responsibility associated with going to work every day, because ultimately that's what we want them to do when they graduate. We don't want the fact that someone's been assigned to Point Academy to become a life sentence. We want to be able to give them the tools that they need, academic and otherwise, to set them up for success. Now, what happens when they're finished with Point Academy? Like, are they assigned there just for a year, or do they go there throughout their, the remainder of their academic years? So, so this is interesting, and this actually ends up showing one of the areas where we, as one of the organizations in potential partnership with Mobile County Public School Systems, as well as the judicial system, this is an area where we actually have an opportunity to do, to do better. For the most part, uh, a child is assigned to us for the semester. However, there's a critical component to this. So if the child navigates our program successfully and we have determined that they're ready to move on, the school system still has to accept them back. And so can you imagine the situation where the child has done everything that they wanted to do, an individual school decides they don't want that child back, and so now they have to come back to point as their only alternative. So that's a problem we definitely need to solve, uh, whether we're talking about children in the school program or even with the issue of graduation. There are some conversations afoot right now that in the past we've allowed children when they completed the program to graduate with their class at their school. That is something we're not currently able to do. So you think about the impact that they may have on a parent who has just guided a child along the way to not be able to see that child walk. We'll definitely come up with a solution to that, but that's one of those things that we, as the adult population dealing with separate entities, need to figure out how to do better because ultimately we want to do what's in the best interest of the child. Yeah, because you think that they've worked so hard mm -hmm. uh, to make themselves better people. They should be rewarded at least in that way and given a second chance. Absolutely. Don't Absolutely. you give them second chances. Kids mm -hmm. deserve second chances. Okay, so for information on the Point Academy, what do we need to do? Call the school system? Call the Boys and Girls Club? Call the Boys and Girls Club. Yes, call the Boys and Girls Club and we'll be able to give you information on Point Academy. Um, there's one other shout out I want to give because you mentioned community, community centers. Um, we are actually going to be running a pilot program with Parks and Recreations through the City of Mobile where we are going to bring Boys and Girls Club programming to the Ham Harmon Thomas Community Center there in Maysville. Okay. And the reason why I think this is potentially very beneficial for both of us was if we as an organization have programming and the City of Mobile Parks and Recreations has buildings, if we can start the mirror of the two things together, we actually have a potential win-win situation because we know that the Boys and Girls Club program works and the kids that are associated with us are not involved in other things that can ultimately put them in the violence category that we're all trying to avoid. That's a great partnership there. Absolutely. It's going to be looking forward to it. So we're going to have to have you come back on during the summer when that gets going really good. Absolutely. And uh, discuss how that is going and how it's working along with the, with the city of Mobile. I'm looking forward to that. And thank you for all that you're doing and NBC 15 is doing to actually target the violence. Because at the end of the day, it takes all of us to actually solve the situation. Take a village and we're working hard. Indeed. Indeed. We're working hard. We're going to have a safe city. Absolutely. All right. Thanks so much, Robert Kennedy, CEO of the Boys and Girls Club of South Alabama, for joining us on Targeting the Violence this week. We'll see you back here next week.